can I congratulate WHD and the Trade for Peace Initiative and, of course, the founder chairman, uh, Dr. Uh, Abdul Said. Um, this is indeed uh, a, a very important initiative and something that we constantly have to strive for. And I've been struck by many of the, the comments and contributions that we've had so far, and I might uh, revert back to those, but keeping an eye on the clock as well. Don't worry, Robin. Um, uh, if one thing last year the pandemic has taught us is that we are nothing alone. And together we are far stronger. Now, you and I knew that before the pandemic, but by goodness, that has brought that home to us. And indeed, you know, thinking of the, the comments that, you know, I mean, for example, that Andrew was giving us about the, the many strands, the strong matrix of communications uh, that exist uh, uh, and so on, um, uh, shows that that is so important that we need each other. None of us can live in splendid isolation. Uh, and none of us, of course, are safe until we are all safe. Whether we be in Africa, India, the Far East, or whether we are in Paris or London or New York, it, all of us need to be uh, uh, safe so that we are all together safe. Um, and yet we know, of course, that um, some were born more equal than others. Uh, and that is true with countries as well. Uh, in uh, the work that I've done, I've had, and today I have the real privilege of working with great people in India, in Nepal, in Nigeria, in Ghana, in Sierra Leone, and in the past in Uganda and Kenya. And uh, all of us are striving to make that difference and to improve uh, that quality of life through trade and development and empowerment. I, as, as Robin said, spent some 13 years as Member of Parliament and Minister in the UK government, and I worked in planning, generation, housing, transport, all those areas that can make a real difference uh, to people's lives. But to do that, that needs to be built on, on, on clearly economic uh, prosperity of the country, of individuals, of being able to uh, uh, work and achieve uh, for themselves and for their families and so on. And it's very interesting uh, that Mr. Uh, Bukovic was saying about needing visionary leadership, and I might come to that in a moment. Um, but the, the the Middle East attitude, uh, the, not Middle East, apologies, Middle Ages attitude of us against them uh, still prevails, and it's quite interesting. And you know, I can think of some of the conversations I had with constituents, for example, uh, that had a sort of us and them mentality uh, that was was there. But I go back to the transportation. You and I know that if there's transportation that is there that can provide mobility, mobility, social mobility, for us to live closer to family, to move to where there's jobs, where there's prosperity, uh, to uh, educate ourselves. We know that it's also a means of getting goods to market so that you can actually put food on your table and on others' tables and other products that you and I want to see. And yet I can take you to countries, as I'm sure you can, where because of that lack of basic infrastructure, the waste, the produce that is wasted while people are hungry and indeed that could be utilised in so many ways uh, to bring in revenue and so on to countries that could then develop in terms of education, uh, as our uh, chairman was saying in his contribution, you know, with trade. You can then put money into education and follow through. Now, as a politician, um, uh, I well know that you know fine words are very good, uh, and indeed we've just had the communique of the G7 meeting, and I'm sure that none of us would disagree with indeed uh, the, the secure our future prosperity we're going to do through championing a freer, fairer trade within a reformed trading system. Now, 
I'm sure I've heard those words before, and I'm not de- I'm not denigrating the the seven leaders that were there of their intentions. I'm not, but we have to make these things work. We're going to protect our planet, of course, and we acknowledge our duty to safeguard the planet for future generations. I can take you to places where you would want to protect it, but of course, it is the only means of economic stability or putting food on the table in those areas for the local population. How are they meant to balance that with what we want to see as a global leadership? Uh, We're going to strengthen our partnerships, particularly with a, a New Deal with Africa. And we're also going to embrace our values, including supporting a target to get 40 million more girls into education uh, through the Global Partnership for Education. None of that I disagree with, and nor would you, and I'm not under deriding the sentiments behind that. But I think someone was saying it can't all be left to everyone else to deliver on these agendas. It has to be for us to play our parts. We're all in fortunate positions where we have an influence to be able to uh, help to make some of those changes. So let me say, we all invest uh, in uh, a trade, business and so on to get a return. And we need a roof over our heads. We need food on our tables. We need to support our families. But there's much more. There's the social return, the humanitarian return, the impact investment. I'm working on a number of projects on agriculture, power generation, Uh, business development, schools and skills academies in some of the countries that I've uh, mentioned. And with that, and I'm delighted to see that backdrop behind Mr Sandeep, which actually had SDG Global Ambassador, because one of the things that you and I can do, I think, with the work that we do and the projects we support or invest in or lead, is to say, how am I contributing to those sustainable development goals, which will make a real difference of providing support for people who are uh, challenged at the moment with some of the basics, but it builds trade. So the work we're doing, for example, on the agricultural project, which is about trade, but is also about being able to help on sustainable development Two, which is about food security and promoting sustainable agriculture. SDG four about education and life learn opportunities for all. Not for me to become uh, clearly the agricultural producer, but for local people to get better productivity, better understanding, collective working together. And then the SDG five about gender equality and empowering all women and girls. Let me say this uh, as I come to conclude. I'm not uh, uh, naive to think that uh, uh, Paul Clark or any of you as individuals can deliver on the whole of those agendas, which would make a great difference through stability, trade, peace, prosperity, and, and, you know, just all of us being decent human beings. You and I alone can't do that, and it needs governments to do that, and that's where it comes to needing that visionary leadership that indeed uh, uh, Mr. Bukovic was uh, was referring to. But Thank we can do so our much. bit. Yeah, we can do our bit. And all I say is this takes two to tango, and we need good governance and clear platforms in countries to operate as well. Thank you, and thank you for allowing me to join this esteemed panel. Thank you very much. 